right, welcome to MindWorks Podcast with Dre and Kev. Welcome so, back, welcome back. In this episode, we're going to be talking a little bit about how, because of everything going on within the media, especially with the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, you know, Kevin and I were thinking about how is this affecting people's mental health? Uh, you know, every day people are waking up, probably seeing things on social media. Uh, I have personally seen so much violence on social media. Too much. Too to the much. point where I'm actually trying to like questioning, like, how is this actually affecting my own mental health? Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, you see all these, um, you know, on my, on my Instagram feed, this is what I'm seeing is like bodies being blown up. Crazy shit. Bodies, honestly. bodies being buried in the ground. People being abducted. People being abducted. People being like, I, I haven't seen any like, and I hope not to see like rape videos and I stuff like not. that or babies actually being killed. Yeah. I mean, I haven't seen anything like that. So I'm sure it's in the dark web though. I'm sure it's in the dark web somewhere. I mean, when I'm not gonna lie, when I was a teenager, I used to always look at the dark web for weird shit sometimes, and mm. you, could, you could probably find some crazy shit. Yeah, online. but the but the question is like, what is viewing violent media, especially when it's related to reality? What does that do to people's mental health? Um, you know, because I don't know. What do you think? It does too much. It does too much, and I think you know, I. Some of my friends were waiting for this video. Honestly, like, yo, what's up with Dre, man? We're going to talk about this or not. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, they were. They were, they were like, all right, when is my work going to give their kind of two cents in this situation? And I think for me, oh boy, most importantly, like, I need to make sure I was at a baseline level. I need to make sure I wasn't acting off of emotions. I need to make sure that my logical brain as well as my emotional brain were settled and not just reactive. So, you know, I mean, this is almost two weeks in at this point. And, you know, I'm glad I gave myself time to not react to the things that I was seeing in social media and the posts that were coming from pro this and anti this and all these other things were just giving me thousands of perspective and uh, different ways to where I could kind of go for some sort of understanding of what the hell was going on. So I needed some time. I needed some time to settle in and to really, you know, make something or make a production that's going to be beneficial and useful for the, for folks who actually tune in and listen to us. Yeah. So I don't know how you've been experiencing the last two weeks when you heard this news and kind of moving forward, aside from the crazy violence on online. To be honest, like I, I feel my reaction to it is something that many people can probably relate to. Um, I, I don't, you know, I, 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 first of all, I just want to say I definitely condemn the killing of innocent civilians and children, you know? And like when I saw this one video with a girl being brought out from the back of a truck, dead, a child, Jeez. it uh, kind of poisoned my mind a little bit. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure it's poisoning a lot of people's minds to see this type of violence under be, be happening in, you know, whatever you want to call it in Gaza or Israel, whatever, whatever, wherever you want to call it, it's, it's happening. Right. And, yeah. My thing also is, you know, as a mental health counselor, I, I do work with Muslim clients and I work with mm -hmm. Jewish clients and, you know, I work with people from both sides of this thing. So to me, it puts me in a standpoint where I personally have to stay neutral on the topic. And I feel the only thing I could do is give my prayers to the people out there that are suffering, the people out there that are going through all this trauma of war and things like that and bombings. I feel it is very unfortunate for those individuals, and it's sad. It's extremely sad. I, I personally feel the terrorist groups and the governments, I, I think, uh, you know, if you're fighting against civilians and people that have nothing to do with the actual war itself and you're killing these people, both are monsters, in my opinion. Yeah. I mean, I, I just, you know, like, come on, like, you didn't see the videos of the kids dying and stuff? Like, I stopped. The, the I honestly, I'm... Bodies? I'm very proud of myself for swiping away a lot of these videos. Yeah, me too. I've been swiping away, but yeah. like it still pops up, and I and I get curious, and my Fucking curiosity kills the cat. The, yeah, <laughs> it pops up all the time, man. Curiosity kills the cat, yeah. and my mental health. And I, I feel like the way that I've been experiencing things is, you know, I'm a very self aware individual, so I do notice myself getting very angry easily lately, and very frustrated and, and annoyed easily. And I know it's not my partner it's not my family it's not anyone else that's doing anything to me so i always question like where's my anger and my frustration and my annoyance and my responses coming from 
And I think, well, you know, I've been going on social media and seeing all this gruesome, violent things happening. Yeah. So I guess that's what it is. So when I stopped watching those videos and I did start swiping away, actually, you know, I'm noticing a little bit more of peacefulness within my mind and my mentality. So what I, you know, based on my own experience of that, you know, some a lot of times in the field of psychology, we know that the subconscious part of ourselves plays a huge role in things that we do without yeah. knowing it. And these are called defense mechanisms. Mm -hmm. And we know that in psychoanalysis, a lot of times when people are going through some sort of stress or threat to their ego, they elicit some sort of defense mechanism, whether it's sublimation, regression, yeah. repression, mm -hmm. displacement, whatever the case it is, you may be experiencing that now. And I won't be surprised if within the near future, more people are seeking mental health services yeah. because of everything going on within the media. Mm -hmm. Media definitely serves as a poison to our mental health. And I think it's important to point that out. And that's what we're pointing out in this episode. So we really want to just tell people, regardless of what side you're on, regardless of who you're voting for or whatever the case is, you know, try to steer away from the violent content. It's not healthy for your mind. And I think that's something that needs to be said from a mental health counselor. Yeah. It's not healthy for your mind, and it's not healthy for the kids' mind. Leave the kids alone. Leave yeah. the kids alone, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, seriously. Like, yeah. I, you know, imagine, I mean, I'm a product of 9-11. Mm -hmm. So I was around 12 years old when 9-11 happened. We didn't have the internet back mm -hmm. then. So it was a little bit easier to disconnect. But now imagine a five, six, seven-year-old going on social media and seeing the things that you've seen that, that made you uncomfortable. Imagine what it would do to a five, six, seven, eight-year-old. Mm. Right. So this is what's happening in reality now. And, you know, I think from the bigger scheme of things, you know, I don't know what the desensitizing of this violence and all this war stuff really means at the end of the day. But I know for a fact that our our youth should not be engaged in this. And, you know, going back a little bit to what you were saying about, you know, feeling a little bit more irritable now and not really knowing the reason. You know, there's a terminology in psychology is called vicarious trauma. And basically, mm -hmm. that's when you are experiencing sort of like a secondhand trauma response. So think of it like smoking a cigarette. The first person to smoke a cigarette, get the first hand smoke. Person who gets the exhale gets a second hand. And even, there's even a third hand smoke off a of clothes or the environment. So this is kind of what's happening now. It's some people are experiencing the heavy trauma. And while others are witnessing, witnessing this uh, stuff that's going on around the world, their trauma responses are also also being triggered. Yeah. So, you know, the fight or flight, the freeze, the flaw, the flop, these are the five trauma responses like I like to think of. You know, your body is like, what the hell is going on? Let's find a way to ease and comfort us. So let's go to the ways that we've kind of dealt with trauma. So, like, we see some people now who are in the fight mode, right? They're either physically fighting or they're trying to be, like, mentally fighting by you know, providing facts and intellectual, you know, information. Um, but that's their way that they've dealt with trauma. Some people are just like frozen. They're not doing anything. Some people taking flight literally and figuratively either, yeah. you know, like trying to get out of the situation. Mm -hmm. And some people are more like frowning. Some people are like more agreeable with this situation, trying to pick a side, trying to pick a community, which is providing them safety and comfort. So, I think this is something very important for people to kind of realize is that, you know, at the end of the day, and this is what I, this is what I say, this is my take. And I'm glad that Dre brought the t-shirt as well. <laughs> um, at the end of the day, man, at, during these times, I choose peace and prayers. You know, I keep my, my own peace of mind because, you know, without my peace of mind, I can't do anything in life and prayers because, you know, I think prayers are beyond our physical manifestations and i think there's something deep in prayers so i offer those who are go undergoing any kind of trauma response or undergoing any kind of you know anything involving this situation you know i offer you my prayers and that's that's what i can do for yeah. my power i'm only one little guy it's a big <laughs> world yeah i mean the vicarious <laughs> trauma thing is very interesting i feel that people definitely experience that a lot of times and we don't even realize it because it's not happening happening directly to us mm -hmm. and that's exactly. why i think the idea of implicit memory and implicit sort of the subconscious it plays a role in like you know when you know something 
you know, you don't directly experience it, but you know it's happening. Yeah. It can definitely influence you on an implicit level, not mm -hmm. explicitly. Like you're not saying, oh my God, just because I watched somebody get killed and bombed, now all of a sudden I'm, I'm like angry and stuff like that. It's just more, it's very implicit. So it'll come out probably in a different way. Um, unless you're really fully expressing your feelings about it, uh, you know, then it becomes, that, that becomes a whole nother story. Uh, I think that it'd be, you know, if you're expressing yourself, I think that's helpful. What but are the recommendations you got for people who are kind of going through it right now? So one thing is definitely get off the social media. Like, yeah, definitely. 100%. Please stop watching all these videos yeah. and all your friends say that if you're not on their side, then you're part of the enemy side. And if you don't agree with them, then you're part of the problem and you're the oppressor and you're and you're contributing to the whole thing that's going on. Like there are there's a quite few people in my feed who are like I would think a little bit they're mature in age, but emotionally <laughs> I guess they're not that mature. <laughs> and they're just like they're going in and they're like, if yeah. you're not on my side, then f you because you're part of the problem. And you know, I mean, why why do we have to be on a side? I'm a I'm a I'm a fucking Latino Catholic from New York. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck do I have to do about Gaza and Israel? What the fuck? <laughs> Don't tell me to choose a side. I have nothing to do with any of that. Like, what's wrong with you? Like, I'm not choosing a side. I'm not. I'm. I'm, I'm like really neutral on this whole topic. I really don't see a point of me choosing a side. I don't even know how that fuck that would even help, honestly. I mean, yeah, like if you if you're Jewish, obviously I know what side you're choosing, and if you're average Muslim, I know what right. side you're choosing. But me, I'm like, wh why would I choose a side? And like, the other day I saw somebody, like one of my old friends, like from high school, yeah. whatever, he's like some Latino guy and he posts the flag of Israel. And I'm just like, what, bro, are you Jewish? Like, no, like, what the fuck are you? I don't know what the wrong with people. Uh, but anyway, it's like, it's not about, it's just, you know, if you're going to choose a side, it, you're, you're, you're literally, you're, you're an evil person because each side is killing innocent people and children. Mm. So either way, you choose a side. That's why I'm not choosing any side. Because if I choose a side, and I choose, let's say I choose, like, Israel, for example. Yeah. And all of a sudden, a week later, Israel's bombing, like, innocent civilians and killing kids. Well, they cut uh, off electricity and they, gas and stuff. They cut off electricity and gas. So they're literally, it's a genocide, right? Yeah. So if I choose side, I'm participating in, in a fucking genocide that's yeah, probably yeah, yeah. happening to a group of people that's not even, that's not, that doesn't sit right with me. So me personally, I'm not choosing a side. And if you want to choose a side, by all means, it's probably based on your religion or your perspective or your belief. That's on you. But for me, a fucking Latino kid from New York, why the hell would I, what did I have anything to do with that? So please don't get mad at me when I don't choose a side. I just, it just makes sense for me not to, because right. I don't want to dip my foot in muddy waters and then. Uh, a week or two later, if something big happens, like let's say Israel ends up nuking Gaza or whatever, I don't think that's going to happen. I, by the way, I don't think that's going to happen. Yeah. But like if something like that were to happen, I'd fucking feel like miserable and I feel bad that I chose that side because I'll be like, yo, that's, that's horrible. Why would you do such a thing? You know what I mean? So it's it's I'm, I'm not I'm not going to choose any sides. Yeah, I'm not choosing sides either. I mean, it's uh, just it, a... it's just that that's where I stand on it. I think that, um, uh, you know, we, we have to sort of understand that. Yeah, once you choose a side, that's it. Like, you know, you got to roll with it. And imagine, like, you change your mind. I mean, you could change your mind. I mean, it really depends on what all goes down. But at the end of the day, I just, I don't know. Like, I'm just not, I'm neutral on this on this topic. Yeah. So, yeah. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back a little bit also to the vicarious trauma responses because I think you said something very important. And it's like, all right, so it doesn't affect us directly. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I kind of want to connect it. You, you spoke about New Yorkers and stuff. I want to connect it to like the black and brown folks of New York City and stuff who's kind of day to day uh, have experienced, you know, some sort of oppression or, you know, uh, inequality or inequity from like the system and all these things. And those kind of uh, traumatic experiences that you've had, ha you've had a trauma response to it. Right. So I think. The big thing about trauma bonding, right, mm -hmm. is when your trauma response is bonding with someone else's trauma response, right? And that this is your head has been programmed subconsciously to think that this is the way that you react to trauma. So you're not even noticing why you're mad or we not even know or other things are coming up like, oh, screw X people or Y people because they, you know, they're always doing this X, Y, Z, whatever. They're always... Uh, you know, being terrorists or they're always being like uh, colonizers or whatever the case is, your, your trauma, you're bonding with the people who are experiencing this now firsthand or secondhand as well. This is the big thing that I think we need to be very aware of because once we are aware of our 
the way we react to trauma, then we can also take a little bit more control and autonomy into how we deal with it. Because we don't have to deal with it in ways that we've dealt with in the past, with violence, aggression, or freezing, or disassociating completely. Yeah. We can grow from this and, you know, kind of find ways to kind of, you know, I like the idea of post-traumatic growth instead of post-traumatic stress. Yeah. What do you, what do you, what do you take on post-traumatic growth? Like, what can we learn from this as people, even if we're not like directly, you know, involved in this whole thing? Cause I'm not involved either. I'll be honest. With you. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I think with post-traumatic growth, I think that's uh, an interesting terminology. I never really, you know, heard about that one, but that's an interesting thing to bring up. Post-traumatic growth, I guess is, can be an idea of flowing with, people's traumas but instead of stressing about it more so growing from it Mm -hmm. i think that's actually a really interesting thing and maybe it should be a diagnosis (laughs) (laughs) i I can give you a couple experiences of my own i have uh, some really traumatic experiences that have elevated me in life so trauma bonding so trauma bonding when you talk about trauma bonding in terms of the israeli palestinian conflict are you talking about like uh Israelis trauma bonding together and Palestinians and Muslims trauma bonding together? I think, yes, I think that's very direct, but also like the case that you were saying of you feeling a little bit more irritable and frustrated. Mm -hmm. So it may just be like something has kind of come up in inside of you Mm -hmm. that has made you want to like, okay, I'm feeling this and this group of people is also feeling this. So now I'm connecting. Yeah. You're connecting And and it's, I guess it sucks when you're more of an empathic person. Maybe you feel it more. If you lack empathy, you really probably don't give two shits about what's going on. Yeah. But when you see, when you're an empathic person and you're seeing people getting blown up to smithereens and things like that. Yes. I guess it, it can affect you. So I guess it's subjective to the individual. I guess some people will suffer more than others. The people who will probably suffer more are the people who are more empathic and uh, don't agree with inhumane treatment or mm-hmm. uh, humanitarian crises. Mm-hmm. You know, so I think that's um, something to consider. And I guess that's the term of trauma bonding in, in terms of that way. Like, yeah, yeah. Hey. Us, for us as counselors. So shout out to mental health counselors and the therapists out there. You guys shouldn't be probably watching all that gruesome videos going on in the uh, in the Israeli-Palestinian yeah. conflict, because you'll probably feel that more, and it'll probably even end up giving you some sort of uh, subconscious compassion fatigue. Yeah, I've got, I mean, I, I don't know about your followings, but a lot of my followings are from my peers and mm-hmm. colleagues and things, and I see their posts, and I'm like, they're probably going through it as well. Like, yeah. they're probably acting like they're more intellectual about it. Like, yeah. sure, you can probably verbalize a little bit better than, you know, let's say, you know, the average citizen, but... Mm-hmm. You know, I think that really realizing that you're going through some sort of traumatic bonding or traumatic response because of the events that you're watching and witnessing Mm -hmm. is very important because we need to figure that out for ourselves and then, you know, show up for our clients in the next day and not bring that into session and even bring that into our household as well. Yeah. Hmm. You got you thinking, right? No, yeah. (laughs) I'm I'm like, damn, I should got to get the mind working. I got to get the mind work. You know, <laughs> mind work. The mind works. No, nah, but it's interesting though. I think you know, talking about the whole Israeli-Palestinian conflict, it, it definitely can take a toll on, like, you know, uh, on the mental health. And hundred percent. I just feel, yeah, like if you have the opportunity not to see what's going on, maybe that is better. But then I know curiosity is like very a very strong mechanism within us all. Uh, so it's hard to like avoid it, kind of like you kind of want to know what's going on to some extent. But, you know, it's a pretty gruesome thing that's happening out there, and it's not healthy for us to be seeing it. Yeah. I mean, we think about it back in the day, um, you know, they didn't, we didn't have the technology to, like, nah. see war stuff. Pre-9-11, and no. And things like that. So, like, now it's like you, there, all these recordings, you can tell, are, like, coming off of, like, iPhones and it's Androids crazy. and stuff like that. And you can actually, like, see, like, the, the POV of a freaking gun shooting people. Like, yeah. Per, like, point of view, first person. It's It's like a... It's crazy. It's kind of, it's like you're, it's literally like, and then also when you think about the um the technology of it, the fact that it's like POV, it's point of view, and you're watching that, it's almost like it's putting you in that cockpit. You know, it's kind of, that's it, crazy. It's that's like, trippy. Like how does that how does that influence like especially like kids? You know it what I mean? Like that watch that type of stuff. And how does that influence you as a person? Like, have do you realize yourself being a little bit more aggressive than usual after watching something gruesome like that? Yeah. Do you, 
find yourself feeling annoyed, like I, I mentioned in the beginning, it can happen. It can yeah. influence you. It's implicit. It's it's something that happens implicitly. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's it's crazy to say that. You know, I just, if the technology is so goddamn advanced, like how is this even being published into our kids' eyes, right? Mm-hmm. Like how, like, there, I don't know, and this is my where I get a little conspiracy-ish, mm-hmm. but why are we being exposed to this level of trauma? Like, why are we being exposed? And I've had this question since 9-11. I was 12 years old, mm-hmm. and luckily enough, at that time, I was not so involved into the screens. But, you know, just seeing people's responses to the media and propaganda and then us going into a different country and taking over, and for no good reason, really, to this day, we don't even know what the hell happened. And we brushed it off. And it's crazy because, like, the media is skewing everything. Right. Like, like the whole hospital bombing thing. It's like they saying that they it's, did it. Then it was the it, it was first the Israeli, the Israelians, and it's the and, Palestinians, and the Hamas people that shot a freaking missile and it exploded on the hospital. Then it's like Israel said that, oh, we did that. And it's like, what the hell is going on? You don't even know what's real and what's not now. Look, Anything could be happening. Anything yeah. could be painted in any sort of way. So what are you really going to believe at the end of the day? That's, that's another scary thing. Is that you can't even trust the things that you're viewing things out unless it's really direct, I think. Unless you really see like a That's child being firsthand. brought into a hospital half dead and like people getting kidnapped, unless yeah. you really see it. I mean, like I said from the beginning, I still haven't seen any kids getting raped or women getting uh, raped or any sort of things like that. And I hope I don't see that. But at the end of the day, it's like, is it really happening or not? You just don't really know. Let's not go too far. And then, and then also people will post like recordings of people like, like the terrorist group talking nah, they and, and it's like, how are you going to know that that's them? It could have been anybody recording yeah. that in any, any, anywhere yeah, in the yeah, world yeah. that can speak the language and record it. Like you don't know if that's, that's real true. or not. So why are you posting it? You're only posting it to feed your own sort of uh, bias of the situation, yeah. depending on what it is. And I think you got to really check that and realize that you can't. You, you know, it's, it's 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 not healthy to do that. Like, you don't really know where that recording is found. You just saw it on someone's Instagram, and you say, you know what, let me repost this. And then it's just like, where's the source? Where's the actual, is it really what's what they're saying? So you don't know that, and that's yeah. scary. You know what I mean? And it happened, it happened again during the pandemic, 2020. So, you know, mm-hmm. we got this level of propaganda and all these stuff for things that, you know, three years later, they said it wasn't true and this and that. So, you know, again... I think that it's very, very important during this time that you seek peace and prayers, that you spend time with your loved ones, that you really disconnect from the social media, that you give yourself, your brain, your psyche, your spirit, some time to really just take one of those deep breaths that Dre just took. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? And if it takes a couple of days of just chilling, if it takes a week or two, give yourself grace, give yourself time. Because it takes time to heal. Everything's time to heal. And I think with time and prayers, again, I'm a big fan of it. But, you know, that's a, that's a kind of the solution that I, I can think of now immediately. And then if you're really struggling, seeking out some mental health services. Um, hit us up. Hit us up. Like, we're here. <laughs> we're here. We're here to help. So I guess we can, um, you know, so that is our take on the whole situation. As you saw, we don't, we're not taking sides here. We're not getting into specifics of things. We're just talking more about, we're, as mental health counselors, just more concerned about how it affects people's mental health. Yeah. So we're not here taking sides. We're not here getting political. But uh, definitely, at the end of the day, the only political thing I stand on is, Leave the kids alone. Just leave the kids alone, Leave man. the kids alone, man. Whatever you do. You do what you want with you. All right, All right man. Peace yeah. out. See you on the flip side. Peace. Peace.